get your story straight. <laughs> so just like in any movie, we want a story. People love stories, especially if they can relate to it in some way. In our case, we want to keep our stories short. I said stories because it's best that we have more than one. So that just like spoken about in module seven, as we get to know our audience, we could pull up stories that will resonate the most with them. For example, if I ask someone, what is stopping you from already living the vegan lifestyle? And they answer, because cheese, I'll continue with my dairy story. Oh yeah, I feel you. I used to consume cheese with every meal and yogurt in between practices at the gym. And I would drink like two to three pouches of milk every week and joke about the fact that I probably drank more milk than a baby cow. Not knowing then that it was actually true that the babies don't even get to drink their mother's milk because they're stolen from their mothers once they're born. So when I learned this information, I knew I would never contribute to the dairy industry again. And I found so many delicious and better alternatives because they don't make me sick. How do you feel about what I just said? And how can I help support you so that you also stop contributing to this super cruel industry? So in this story, I have the relatable part. I used to consume so much dairy. And then I talk about my realizations that are horrible and that anyone could agree with. Then I give them hope with the alternatives available for them. And I offer to help them in any way. Often I dare them to watch Dairy is Scary so that they never pay for that crap again. So what's your story? One of the first things I learned in my professional practice and development at IHN in class was to produce a relatable story, a true story. Back then and still to this day, I would introduce myself as a personal trainer, a holistic nutritionist and a mindset coach. Also as an empowered female who had healed herself from the inside out, stopping the progression of MS. Just with this elevator pitch in mind, I can break it down to four to five different stories. So if someone is into fitness and all muscular, I'll talk about the fact that I'm a PT, that my background is mixed martial arts and or that I won a figure competition and qualified for the nationals all while being vegan, depending on what I found out about them and their interests. I'll also mention game changers. And so if someone is super into health, I talk about my MS story, how it all started and how it brought me down to a path of discovery. Going vegan saved my life. I was shocked by the animal agriculture system and I vowed to never again take part. I urged them to watch Forks Over Knives, Fat Sick and Nearly Dead, and What the Health, for example. If someone practices or teaches yoga, I'll mention the principles of, of Ahimsa and why yoga resonates so much with me. I'll mention people like Sad Guru and many amazing people that preach peace that also embody it and how important it is for all living beings. If they talk about some type of health, health ailment or disease or reasons why they can't be vegan, I mentioned the fact that I was told seven years ago, after already being vegan and feeling the best that I'd ever had, that I was a blood type O plus and therefore it was the caveman diet and I needed to be eating meat only and couldn't eat beans or legumes. <laughs> Do you think that this iridologist truth was bypass my reality? Nope. And so if they try to tie in an indigenous excuse, I mentioned that I'm on one eighth Algonquin and it's not a good excuse. The world is changing. So we all need to be as well. If they complain about the fact that we can't do anything and it doesn't make a difference. I talk about how, when I used to visit my parents, I had no options during stops on the way. And now I have plenty and I don't even need to pack a lunch anymore. And when I used to do groceries 10 years ago, I could choose soy milk and tofu if I was lucky that were direct vegan products. Now I could choose 10 different nut milks and so many other vegan products on top of the delicious whole foods that were thankfully always there for me. The key here is that I have some type of response and a story tied into every excuse people come up with. And I shared Earthling Ed's PDF. So take a bit of time and think of all of those most common excuses or go over the PDF of what people give you all the time and find the objections that resonate with you the most and tie in a story so that they could relate to it. A real story that makes you more human and allows them to drop their guard. Think about it. 
Try to keep your stories and responses brief. Get your point across after figuring out who they are and how they'll be the most receptive to you. Connect with them, give them a call for action and exchange contact info. Maybe even get some other contacts on the spot from them. And when you're having all of those wonderful conversations and have a few stories ready in your back pocket, avoid using words like should and shouldn't. We will be talking about why in the next module. Follow me.